Welcome to the Superfast Touch Designer tutorial series. In this tutorial, we are going to create a simple tile composition with some type of noise using the replicator operator, the same one that allows us to clone operators parametrically, and that can have various uses depending on the program we are designing. As you can see in this video, we have a 5x5 five five grid of squares, each one with the same group of operators that are inside a base component. But each base, when cloned, is using different parameters to give us this more dynamic composition. To follow this tutorial, here's what you need to know. 1. Network setup. I'll provide a screenshot of the full network. If it's too large, I'll break it into multiple images with clear indications so you can recreate it without constantly pausing the video. 2. Parameters. Instead of adjusting parameters live, I'll display them as static images, allowing you to copy them at your own pace without interruptions. Let's get started. Chapter 1. Overview. Let's review the network step by step to understand each of the sections, and later we will delve into how to use the replicator to achieve this effect. Additionally, as a bonus, we will learn to create custom based components that will serve us as a foundation for other projects, studies, or experimentations. Very well. I have divided the network into three sections. The main section or main network, where we will operate all the logic related to the replicator, and where we will create a base component, which, in turn, has an internal network with the logic to create these noises that resemble the reflections of a type of mirror. The second section I have called clones. This section is dynamic and will be larger or smaller depending on the number of clones we choose to make. And finally, the last section, the final output, this time without post-processing, where we will use a layout to arrange each of the renders of these clones in a grid form. Let's review the most important section, the main network. Here we have the operator called replicator. Its function is quite simple. Replicate or clone any given operator. To do this, simply drag the operator we want to clone into the master operator parameter. In the case of this project, I have a base component that internally has a series of operators. Now, the second most important parameter of the operator is the number of replicas or clones. In this case, I have put 16, but to see an example, let's change this to 25 and refresh the operator. As you can see, Automatically, we now have a 5x5 five five grid. Keep in mind that the final composition by itself will not be done by the replicator. That's why I have a layout with the grid option to combine all these clones into a single composition. For now, remember that you need a master operator, the operator you are going to replicate, and indicate the number of copies you want. Finally, in the layout, you can choose if the clones are rearranged in different ways, such as in rows, columns, or in a grid as I have it here. Okay, let's go back to leaving this at 16. and. Before continuing here, I created a keyboard input where I reference a keyboard key to reset the creation of the clones. This is important because every time you make a change in the master operator, in my case, this base called base one, to see the changes applied within the base, you will need to refresh the operator. Let's see an example. Let's go into base one, and I want the final visualization of this operator to be these lines. I drag the lines to my last select and refresh with the number one key, and well, now we can see the new result. Let's leave it as it was and go back to the main network. Now then, here comes a very important logic between these two operators, base one and constant one. What is happening exactly and why have I created this logic? It all starts with a question. What would happen if I wanted to change the parameters of each of the clones simultaneously? If I didn't have this logic built, I would have to go inside each base component and manually manipulate each operator. This would be an excessively long task. So we have to find a way to make this network dynamic using quite simple resources. For this, this constant is mapping its values within the base component. For example, the scale in X, Y, or Z is assigned to these parameters of base one. Or for example, the period is assigned to this other parameter of the same name called period. Why do we have to work this way? The answer is simple. When we clone base one, all the clones automatically, when copied, will also copy the references they have anchored to this constant. This means that if I now move the values of the constant, you will see that it will change in all the clone bases, with which I can manipulate the operators that are inside each of the bases without having to manually enter each base. For example, if I manipulate the values of the period, we see that all base components are going to change, thus maintaining a practical way to manipulate values. Now, for this to work, you have to do the following. I'm going to show it to you only once, and then you can replicate this with as many parameters as you want. I have great news. 
I've just launched a school community for individuals who want to professionalize as creative technologists without breaking the bank. Within this community, you'll discover courses for beginner, intermediate, and advanced users. Additionally, we will have masterclasses on topics like reactive audio, interactive systems, multimedia projects, LED lighting, and more. What's even more interesting is the knowledge-hungry nature of this community. Members actively share their experiences in a way that's unique compared to other platforms, providing constant feedback, interacting with one another, and even creating opportunities for study meetups. If this resonates with you, I've included a link in the description to help you firmly embark on your touch designer journey. To solve this, you first have to learn to create a base component. Let's go outside of this network, where I have an example to teach you from scratch. Here I have these three operators. What I have to do to put them inside a base that contains all the operators in a single dynamic operator is to select everything and look for the option Collapse Selected. With this, you have already created a base component. Now remember that our base component has a page that we created called Parameters. And within this page, we created some parameters related to the noise. To do this, right-click on the base component and select the option Customize Parameters. A pop-up window will open with a menu to create pages and parameters. To continue with the example, I am going to create a page called Parameters. I click on Add Page, and that's it. Now we have the new Parameters page here. Now, to add a new parameter, we locate ourselves in this section. Let's choose an integer number parameter, int, that has three values, and we'll call it size. We click on Add Parameter, and we already have a new parameter within the base component. Remember that you can create different types of parameters, such as texts, floating point numbers, toggles, file in, etc. You have to choose the one that corresponds to the parameter you are going to reference within the base component. In this case, the integer number size helps me to manipulate the size of the noise that is inside this base. This new parameter called size has to point to one of the operators that we have inside the base, right? To do this, we can do the following. Right click on the base and select the parameters options. Now double click on the base to enter the network. Select the first noise to give you an example. Now in the parameters of the base, select copy parameters, locate yourself in the transform of the noise, and in the scale, right click and select the option paste bind. It is important that you use the bind option because this allows us to chain the values, whether we move them from the base component or from the noise. For example, if I put the scale at two inside the noise, I see that it also changes in the base component. Now if I do it the other way around, I put the values in the base, we see that they also change in the noise. This is extremely important to understand. Now we need to create a constant, which we are going to reference to the parameters of the base component. We create the channel scale x, and we reference it to the first value of the scale within the base. Perfect. Now we can manipulate the base component with the constant. But now you will ask yourself, why don't we manipulate the values directly from the base? And yes, it's a great question. You can do it, but this gives us another advantage because if you locate yourself in each of the base components that we clone, we could have individual values for each operator. However, if you manipulate the values of the constant, you can change all the values of each of the clones at the same time. This gives us two layers of depth to manipulate this composition. Understanding this, I have other parameters that, by their name, you can already realize are referenced only to the first operator of this network, which is a noise. Perfect, we are ready for the next section. A quick pause. If it's your first time on the channel, hi. I'm Okamarufu, and I share your obsession with Learning Touch Designer. I love this program, and I do my best to share everything I know to make learning easier for you. If you want to go even deeper, you can join nearly 3,000 people on my Patreon, where you'll get access to all my free VJ packs, complete project files, and exclusive components and plugins. I've also set up a fully organized shop with conceptual VJ packs, advanced plugins, and a lot more. Everything is neatly arranged in collections, so you can easily find exactly what you need. And if subscribing isn't your thing, no worries. You can still grab individual project files anytime, no strings attached. So if you're ready to take your visuals to the next level, create better projects, and support what I do, check out my Patreon. Chapter 2, Network. Remember, I'll now show you a screenshot of the network so you can copy it. Depending on its complexity, it might take more than one screenshot, and I'll include clear indications whenever necessary. Before we continue, 
Thank you all for watching and subscribing. Reaching over 20,000 subscribers in just one year has exceeded my expectations. Still, 74% of viewers haven't subscribed. If my videos help you, please hit subscribe. It really supports creating more high quality touch designer tutorials. Chapter three, parameters. Now that you have the entire network created, let's review some important things. First, you already know that I created a keyboard in to refresh every time we make a change within the operators of base one. Second, every time you refresh the replicator, the cloned operators will not connect anywhere by default. For this, you have to use a Python line that will tell the operators that they should automatically connect to layout one. To do this, press control plus E over the dat operator that has the callbacks. And you are going to use the following Python line here. Copy this line calmly while I give you some indications of what the logic of this expression means. Perfect. Test that it works for you by refreshing the replicator. Now let's review some details between the base and the constant. First, we already know how to create more parameters, and we have mapped them from the constant to base one, and from base one to the internal operators, like the noise. So far, perfect. But what happens if we want, for example, each of the clones to have a different seed in the noise so that the same image is not always repeated? For this, we do the following trick. We enter the base by double clicking. We look for the noise, and we are going to write the following expression in the seed, parent open and close, parenthesis dot digits. This means that the number we will see here is the number that Touch Designer automatically assigns to the parent that contains this network, that is base one. For example, here we see that we have the number one assigned because the last number after the name base is the number one. If we look at the rest of the clones, we will see that clone zero will assign a seed of zero. Clone nine, for example, will assign a seed with the value nine and so on. The first number of the first clone could be zero or one depending on your preferences, but to assign it which number to start the count, you do it in the replicant suffix start parameter. In my case, I have it at zero. If I change it to one, we see that now the first base starts with the number one. Perfect, now the only thing you need to know is that inside the base component of the mini network you created, you absolutely have to put an out at the end. And you must activate the blue display so that the output of each base shows us this signal. Without this, you will not be able to see the result. So don't forget to do it. Finally, let's review the details of this mini network here the one that provides us with the final result. First, remember that this add is referenced within the feedback. Then, the last transform is referenced within the first select, which is connected to an out. Regarding the parameters of the noise, I leave them to your total freedom, since the more you play with this and use your own taste, the better results you will find. The opacity of the level will normally work well if you leave it between 0.9 and 0.99. With the blur, you can also use these parameters or go looking for the ones you like. The displacement is important. Take into account that we have the blur connected to both inputs of the displacement and use very low parameters in the displace weight. Finally, in the transform, I'm using the classic expression abs time dot seconds. Multiply by 10 so that there is rotation. And in the tile option, I use mirror so that the corners of the image are completed. You can also try dragging different operators to the last select and refreshing the replicator. For example, here I have the signal without the blur and the displacement, which is already quite interesting and feels more like a work of generative art. Here I drag the lines of the noise without the feedback, and we have a more 2D parametric graphic result. And that's it. Remember that you can create a more complex series of parameters within your base component, which will be cloned and reflected in your final result. I hope you play around and make your own reinterpretation of this simple technique. I hope you've successfully completed this tutorial. If you have any questions, feel free to ask in the comments or join the discussion.